What's up, yo? Welcome back to the channel, Breaking Bad, uh -huh. Season 4, Episode 2. I, I feel like we're on like a four-episode string of me saying, we're coming off the most intense episode <laughs> of this show that we've seen to date. Yeah. Because that shit was intense. Box Cutter was absolute insanity. I mean, just the way... Just Gus walked in, handled his business, walked out, and then when he was back into a, a grand position of power, get back to work. Holy shit. And there was someone, someone reminded us in the comments that, you know, Gus was on record with saying that he doesn't like to motivate through fear. And it's well, like... Well... <laughs> Circumstances change a little bit. Yep, this is not a regular situation, I feel. That, I, I don't necessarily know if that was motivation either, or if it was just like a message, just like, I might not be able to kill you because now I need you because you took out my plan B. I'm gonna hurt other people around. And it's like, holy shit. I guess that is motivation to kind of stay in line. Yeah. But it's like, that that whole scene was just so savage. Like I didn't catch it the first mm. time watching. I don't know if you did. What's that? But when when <laughs> when Gus went and slit his throat, Mike in the background pulled his gun out and like just instincts just kicked in. Just like holy shit! Like even Mike was just like, oh my god, what is happening? Yeah, well, I mean, if if he's gonna kill Victor, his like right hand dude, he's, yeah. gonna, he's gonna like what try to go for me? Yeah, and I mean Victor, you know, he crossed the line. He tried to cook. Uh, that is potentially one reason why, like, he Gus got, didn't he tell got him. He too cocky. Well, Gus didn't tell him to do it, and he just started doing it. Yeah. And well, he was at the... He was trying to take the initiative. Right. I mean, I don't know if Gus appreciates that in this business, because he could waste lots and lots of money of of, of material and, yeah. and ingredients well, I and just, stuff. I just... Whatever. But he was also at the, at the scene. Scene of, of the, the crime. crime. Like, People could have seen him. He saw him show up. One guy was like, hey, dude, don't go in there. That's a crime scene. It's like... Then, you know, you don't go in there. I mean, and, like, people don't recognize him from the, the, the you know, the building. Right, exactly. Just... And you get melted for that. Got melted. Insane. Ugh. Absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> it's just so crazy. Like, that... That was another one of those moments that I didn't see coming. No! Like, How? How? I thought yeah. Walt was going to die. I don't know. I didn't... At this point, I, I feel like he's got... He's got that plot armor real strong right now. I don't think Walt's going anywhere right now. Um, well, we have only this season and next season. There's a lot of episodes and, left, though. And that's though. it, though. Like, and, and right now, in the moment that we're in... Walt is very, very valuable to Gus in his business. He is... I, you know what I wish? That that Walt never said, I'll do it for free. Don't you ever fucking say that shit. That, Don't you ever say that shit. I mean, shit. he said that because to Mike, right? Not to... Gus wasn't around for I that. know, but still. I don't that, want you to ever blurt that shit out and, and just keep it in I your mean, head. He was... That was... That was an epic moment because... You saw the true like, fear. But no, not only that, but like... He was able to flip it around and, like, get Jesse on the, like, he, I don't know how real that was. Like, I'm sure there was a level of real fear there, but I think it was also a level of him playing it up and, and like, and like looking stalling like. stalling so that he could think of something really fast. He's good. He, He's good. he is all the way into this and just the way that he was able to just, like, <laughs> he showed Mike Heisenberg, like, he showed him the other side of what Walt can be. And it's just like, it's holy shit, this dude, you don't want to be on his bad side either. No, you like, don't. Like, it is not a good situation. And, you know, Jesse is just, before we recorded, you used the word acceptance. And I don't, I don't know if, like, he's at a level of acceptance, but I feel like he's just, like, numb and just completely in Accepted shock. Accepted it? Like, like, his situation. Well, yeah, like, he's accepted his situation. Or that's that he's just... Acceptance, in, yes? I no? Don't, I don't... Yeah. But I don't know if it's like a combination of just total shock that he's just in this state of just being numb now. But like, it was really interesting because he was sitting there in fear and then he like slit Victor's throat and he sat up in, in kind of anger. 
Like his his mood changed when the death happened, and it's another one of those moments where Jesse is just such a fascinating character. He is because it's like he was horrified, and then he got angry, and then he just became like. Well, he ain't going to kill us, but basically going to make us want to feel like we want to be dead. Yeah. And that scene with them at the, at the diner was just hilarious. Another another very Pulp Fiction moment with them matching outfits, sitting in a diner, kind of contemplating their future. Mm-hmm. It was pretty amazing. And they left us at the end of that episode with the biggest ho shit moment of the episode. They, they zoomed in onto Gail's lab notes. With a room full of officers. They're going to tear that room apart. They're going to investigate everything. They're going to look at everything. What I, the I hell did he even, put in there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That is horrifying if, like, Walt's name's in there and Gus's name is in there or Mike's name is in there. It's like the whole plan, the whole recipe, everything just broken down, like... In this one book, all it takes is one DEA agent to find the book, open it, and be like, oh, hey. But then maybe they could think that, you know, that Gale was Heisenberg. He doesn't fit the description, though. But he's got all those fucking notes. Yeah, I don't know. I know that, I, I, I know he doesn't fit as the long, description at all. As long as there's no names in there. Right. As long as he didn't file, like, like wasn't real specific. Like, my boss today... Gus told me to do this, and yeah. I did this, and I met my new boss in Walt, and whatever. Walt's like, fantastic, and we like, like the same stuff. Like, I don't know how specific he got in, in his notes. Like I'm really fascinated by that. This season got off to an intense start. You ready to jump into it? Yes, please. Let's go, yo. How does it look? Basically, any lawman worth his salt is going to spot that, yeah. Assuming that's a deal breaker? Yes, it's a deal breaker. Shit. You'd best go with something more compact. 38 special. Snub nose. If you can't get it done with five, then you're into spray and pray. In which case, I wouldn't count on another six closing the deal. You load that with 158 grain hollow points. Can't get more dependable than a wheel gun. Where do you find this guy? <laughs> Seriously. Maybe it'll feel better on the left side. General rule, you don't want to cross draw, not unless you're going to be sitting, store clerks, card gamers, and such. That's interesting. I never thought of that before. Solid. Either way, you're going to want to practice your draw, because if you're all fingers, well, it might could be him keeping a piece instead of you. Oh, shit. Well, this is terrifying. Seriously. That there is why you're going to pay me five times what you'd pay your neighborhood gun store. Serial number has been filed off. I I don't want to be caught with this on me. <laughs> no, sir, to state the obvious, you don't. I've been providing my services for the past 30-odd years, thinking that time I'd learn better than ask a man his business, especially not one referred by the lawyer. Oh. So I do feel the urge to ask. Of course. Are we strictly talking defense here? Absolutely. Defense. You'd save yourself a potential felony two-spot for carrying a weapon with a deface serial number if you just buy it legally. This the West, boss. Man steps to you bent on doing you bodily harm. You got every right to plant your feet and shoot to kill. If you're not a convicted felon, you might best be advised to bear your arms within the confines of the law. Okay. It's for defense. Hmm. What do you think of that? Fuck. He's he's legit worried. And he's in it. <laughs> like if he wasn't all the way in before, he's in all the way now. He's freaking packing now. Shit. Like a regular drug. Oh dealer. man. Ah oh, shit. Well. This has got Mike all fucked up, too. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Is 
to have blood. Damn, it's crazy to see Mike's show. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> hey, he's got a Daryl too. That is a pretty insane stereo. Yeah, he's trying to drown out his thoughts or what, man? Take all the lines jumping around. Psychedelic. Kind of like just want to stare at him. <laughs> Damn, man. He had all that sobriety. steps and all that Seriously. yeah good for him maybe just a little bump no for dead yo oh like shit all cranial when you cap him in the head it's like booyah aww fucked up their sobriety I mean, that's their fault for going over there, but. <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> Damn, man. It's quiet. Oh, he can't. You know what this, this place needs? Something loud. Oh, shit. He doesn't want to be alone and he doesn't want the quiet because then he has to hear his own thoughts. Jesus. Wow. Man, he is. He is in a bad place right now. It's for defense, right? No, no way it is. He's gonna friggin' try to kill Gus. And and then everybody's gonna be after him. This can't be a good idea. <laughs> Does he have any other choice? Gus is gonna kill him the first chance that he gets. Looks like you're looking at a rock. It's not a rock. It's a mineral. Keep acting like you give the first shit and I will. It's two in the morning. When I say counted, Marie, there are four bedrooms in this house. Oh. What, don't sleep in ours? You know, I mean, if I'm keeping you awake. He just, he's trying to block everybody out. He's in a bad place, too. I understand. I just, I mean, it's your wife, man. <laughs> just got the friggin' thing just rolling through the party. I mean, that thing is awesome. What are you doing? He doesn't care? Dude, if somebody touched my fucking Roomba, I would... <laughs> we would have words. I got a bitch. Shit. <laughs> down. Let's go out and get everybody some breakfast. Stock up on liquor while you're at it. Keep this party going. I mean it, yo. There's so much freaking math. Um. Relax, just relax. Don't do anything hasty. Yo, you the new guy? Yeah. Two hundred and one point six. Give it a second way, if you would, please. New policy. Shit. What? What? Where's Gus? Why? Because I would like to speak with him. Because 
The way we left things, I, I would like the chance to clear the air. I don't think that's gonna be necessary what? anymore. Walter, you're never gonna see him again. Shit. <laughs> oh man, that puts a wrench in his plans. Yikes. I mean, it makes sense. Yep. I wouldn't, I mean. <laughs> You have no reason to ever no, go see why him would again. He, yeah, why would he need to come down there? You're supposed to be fucking working. You don't need him anymore. Yes. Come on, wait a soldier. Oh, man. You do it. Another few yards. Hey. Oh, Look at you, baby. Come on, honey. Oh, come on. Come on, Hank. All right, buddy. Damn. That's what I call kicking some ass. Oh, oh that was awesome, babe. Oh. Nice. What is that supposed to mean? One day at a time. All we can do. You've got a real way with him. You want to go full time? We've got a spare bedroom. I'll see you tomorrow. Like, don't leave me alone with him anymore? Wow. If you work up an appetite, I'm sure that you did. Listen, I was thinking about cooking tonight. So Sorry. Yes. My feelings are hurt. I think he gets the sense that she's not all in on this. There's just one thing you and me gotta talk about. And that's this. What's that? After the Moss was murdered, two dudes from the block, a couple bangers he used to hang with, get run over. One of them shot in the head. Same night, I get this in my mailbox. Oh. Shit. This was you? Used to get you and Brock out of that shithole in the neighborhood. Shit, man. Yeah. That's nuts. Man, he left her a stack. Mm-hmm. Thanks. I hope she does something good with it. Yeah. She will. She's turning things around. She will. Did he go to his house? He went to Gus's house. What's he doing at Gus's house? Are you stupid? Like Gus doesn't have surveillance and shit. Oh God. What oh. are you gonna do? Oh man. The fuck? What are you gonna do? Did he just flip his switch? He even made like a snarl face. He put the hat on. Like getting all attitude y. What is he? Dude, you really, really think he could just walk up to Gus's house? This is insane. Doesn't he have children? Uh, yeah, Mike's, Mike's probably calling him right now. I'll be like, Dick, what the fuck are you doing? Oh shit. Obviously you can't just walk up to his house. Oh man. Everything is purple with Marie. Everything. Even the delivery guy shirt. Hi. Ton of bricks. Rocks. Jeez. <laughs> he ordered a lot of friggin' minerals. Did you check him for damage? I'm sorry, if you talk, if you told me to get out of our bedroom and then telling me to check your fucking minerals, I'd be like, I'm gonna check these up your ass. Even if I was laying in bed unable to walk? Don't fucking 
didn't talk to the hand that feeds you like that. No. You want to buy my car wash. And I am prepared to talk numbers right now. Ten million dollars. Well, let's try 879,000. On a typical day, you average 19 cars per hour, giving me an estimate of your annual cash flow. <laughs> Damn, Skyler. $20 million. Oh, shit. Okay, Mr. Wallenitz, this... This is the price for Walter White. He quit without giving me notice. He broke my air fresheners. He cursed at me and grabbed himself. And now he wants to buy my car wash. The price he pays is $20 million. Now, please leave. Shit. He never said how things went on his exit. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Have you suffered injury or cut from it? Fucking Saul. Call me. It goes without saying that the six, seven, perhaps even eight figure cash settlement that I can win for you if you want to tip the scales back in your favor. Better call Saul. This guy. Why is it my not looking so good? Coughing and stuff. He's freaking at the bar during the day. Dealing with some shit himself. I didn't want any of this to happen. Everything I did, I did out of loyalty to my partner. I hope you can appreciate that. But I appreciate that when you were going to kill me, we were simply following orders. I get that completely. There's a load off my mind. <laughs> I love Mike. I cannot be alone in feeling this way. Yeah. Not after what happened to Victor. What's with the piece? Hmm. Right hip inside your waistband. Push comes to the shove. It's not going to help. Yeah. Mike, do I have to come right out and say this? If it happened to Victor, it could happen to you. He cuts a man's throat just to send a message. You won, Walter. You got the job. Do yourself a favor and learn to take yes for an answer. Okay. I got the job. But for how long? Get me in a room with him. Just get me in a room. And I'll do the rest. What the fuck? He just told Mike. I I, I don't think that was a good you idea. Know? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> oh! Yeah, that wasn't a good idea, dude. Damn. <coughs> I broke a rib. Thanks for the drink. Shit. <laughs> that backfired a little bit. Yeah. Unless Mike now follow throughs on that because of that situation. You know we got mad love for you. Now that you're back in the mix, it's like nothing but good days ahead. He doesn't even want to be alone. That's all I'm saying. Shit. Room ain't gonna clean that up. Nope. Especially after that fucking guy, like, I think took it apart. <laughs> oh, Jesse. <laughs> Oh my god. He's in a bad way. Shit, Jesse. Between killing Gale and seeing Victor getting his throat slit. It's a lot, man. Yeah. No normal person should ever have to deal with that kind of thing. Any of the shit that Jesse's like, gone through, yeah. That's... This is... We've been saying it for a while now, it feels like, in terms of this episode, this, this show, but, like, Jesse's not cut out for this kind of stuff. No. Like, he's a good dude who, you know, is just caught up in some really bad shit. He just wants to goof off and have a good time, and he can't... Oh, my God. He, there is no more goofing off with Jesse. That part of him is gone. Yeah. He's been completely numbed out. Completely. That is so sad. Oh, shit. And, and it's Walter, like... Walter. The, what the fuck? I mean, 
the last thing Jesse wants and needs right now is like he can't be alone. No, he can't. He can't be alone, and he can't be in, in quiet. silence. Like, yeah. How hor like that's got to be so horrible. I feel so bad for him. <laughs> like, and he still got to go back to work, go back to the friggin' scene of the friggin' box cutter. Yeah. Do they get weekends off? <laughs> I don't know what their skip work schedules right? are. Right? Like. No, I mean, but I just feel like he has to. He's just. He has to go back like every day. Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly. I don't know if it's a seven days a week thing, but I guess they just have to hit a certain quota each week, and however much time they got to put in the lab, I guess that's what they do. But yeah, I mean, sorry, that wasn't meant as a joke or anything. No, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I don't. I. I the way it was proposed early on is that. Walt was able to make his own hours and do his own thing. Mm -hmm. So, but that was at a different stage. I don't think it matters as long as they deliver their amount that they're supposed to. I think they can work however they want. Mm -hmm. But like, how is how is he even at all focused in the lab to get work done? Right. Well, I mean, he's got I mean, the he's, earbuds. Yeah, and he's blaring his music in his ears. But still, like, is that enough to stay focused in the scene of? a very traumatic experience like that's crazy and walt now i don't know i don't know with him he's trying to take things into his own hands and it's he just shouldn't at least this episode it backfired on him i don't i can't imagine mike voluntarily deciding to go against gus, gus. I just feel like the shit storm is going to be way bigger than Gus if you fucking do something to Gus. I mean, maybe it's a situation where you cut the head off the snake and the body just squirms around and doesn't know what it's doing. Maybe like the people who are under Gus wouldn't know what to do or how to act and would look to Walter as like... Okay, but can Walter get paid first? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, this whole situation, like, just starting the episode with him buying a gun and, like, taking it to the lab. Now they have a new guy who's there, basically Victor's, taking Victor's spot. And Mike's there, too, to double-check everything. And now they have a new policy that they got to double-check the weight on all the drugs they're making. And Mike noticed immediately, like, obviously Mike would notice, like, this is the world he lives in. That he's gonna the friggin' Walt strap now. Yeah. Like I mean he was a police officer before that. Like he, you can't hide that. Like as concealed as that weapon is, like Mike is going to Especially after the shit they went through. And then he goes to Gus's house. Yeah, man. Was that Mike that called him? Probably. I didn't hear clearly who who was on the phone, but it sounded like Mike. Yeah, I mean Who else would it be? Exactly. Mike is just responsible. Unless it was friggin' Gus from his house, like, go home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, what the fuck but, are you doing? But yeah, it was, it was probably Mike. That's that, that's the most logical situation here. That <sighs> It's just so dangerous now. He's playing a game that feels like he can't win. Like, you can put your little hat on all you want. <laughs> like, it, that doesn't make you better than these people who've been in this world for a long time. Exactly. I'm like, these people have been doing it forever. They you have so just... much experience. It's just... I don't know. This is all worrisome. I they're, don't know. Jesse and Walt are in like two completely different mind states right now. Jesse's in like a super just depressed and upset and just numb. Traumatized. Just doesn't want to do anything state. And Walt's like... I need to go kill him. Who does Walt think he is? Like the fucking Punisher? <laughs> <laughs> meet, meet your, your issues he's taking head his, on? No. He's taking his alter ego a little too far yeah. is what he's doing. Heisenberg is not... This, the Punisher. <laughs> well, it's just, this isn't your world. Like, it is, but you're a noob. You're a rookie. You're like, a cook. You're going to go after Mike and Gus? Like, yeah, you're not you see a what gang Gus gang. did? You're a, a cook. Did you like, see what Gus did? Yes. He, then who knows how long Victor was with him. He just friggin' took out a box cutter and slit the dude's throat like, in front of no everyone. Like, no big deal. Zero hesitation. Zero expression on his face. Like, those are the, these are the people that you're fucking with? He took out the cartel. Like, he took out the dudes in Mexico. Like, and Walt knows this. 
he knows what he's dealing with and he's still trying to walk up to the dude's house. I mean, <laughs> and with I the do. Twins. With the twins even, he, what they did to Hank, like, come on. I mean, I got to give props, a little props to Walt for being so confident in his ability. Like, that takes a pretty crazy dude to do what he's trying to do. So, you know, I wouldn't do that shit. I could tell you that much. So I got to give a little props for having apparent balls of steel and just <laughs> no gives a fucks about trying to deal with what you need to deal with because he sees the writing on the wall. He understands the moment Gus gets the opportunity to replace him, he's gone. Yep. And all of the pent up <sighs> aggression and all the grudges are going to be taken out on wall and he will be no more. <laughs> it's just, Same thing with Jesse. It's just a matter of like, like they talked about in the little cafe, like Jesse's like, yeah, where is he going to find someone that he trusts and can cook like you? Like, he made it a really good point. It can't be an easy thing to be like, hey, so you're a really good chemist. Do you want to come cook some meth? Like, like, how do you find those people? I don't know. How did he find Gail? Yeah, I don't know how he found Gail. I mean, we know how he found Walt because, you know, Walt took the initiative. Yeah. So it's... I just don't know if there's many of those dudes running around Albuquerque or if you got to do like, you got to, you got to do your recruitment worldwide or at least countrywide and your recruitment for, for the next chemist to replace Oh Walt. God. And Skylar, she had a great plan. She did a really good job with her work. I, I agree. I didn't know what she was doing when she was sitting there like, you know, writing That's... all the details down, but shit, she's good. But it's a, it's a great lesson to be learned. You can't go into a situation like that without knowing everything. She didn't know what Walt did on his way out. As far as I know, she doesn't know that. She doesn't know that he friggin' van like destroyed the place and like had a friggin' psycho trip like on his way out of there. And then just bailed on the dude. <laughs> He's like <laughs> I like that the first thing that he said was like, he quit and gave me no notice. <laughs> it's like I I, I guess that just that as a business owner, that would probably piss you off more than anything. You're well, expecting yeah. the guy to show up to work the next day, and he didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that would make me mad. I so, a little plan, like $20 million, because it's Walt. Like, shit. Should have gone with that 10 mil. <laughs> You're not buying that place for 10 mil. That's crazy. But, like, I again, no. skylar has been doing a really good job lately. She has really stepped up to the plate since, you know, she's kind of become invested in dedicated to helping Walt in the business and it's just she didn't have she didn't have all the information going into that situation so I just and Hank oh, with his minerals that's do not talk to your wife like that let her get into the trenches with you I think Marie is making it obvious that she doesn't want this to be happening anymore but it's she's like we, been super supportive yeah but at the same time, like, she's, like, talking to the therapist, like, stay, like, don't leave. Well, only because of the way because she has been acting. Deal, she doesn't want to deal with it. And, because he's treating her like shit. Right, but, and and I'm sure he and has. And Hank's being, like, super trust awesome me, to the therapist. He is, he is a super, like, macho, he's got a certain perception and, and certain identity that he needs to uphold. So he doesn't be, want to be weak in front of his wife. Of course not. And the fact but that... But you don't just tell your wife, get out. If you were acting in a certain way that was making it harder for me to get better, yeah, maybe he... Then I would be like, deuces. You wouldn't. I would too. No, you wouldn't. If you're going to tell me to get out, I'd be like, all then, right, fine. See you in a few then days. You don't have then you need to go to the bathroom. Then you don't have enough of an understanding that with the, the with the guy's dealing with. If anybody's seen Diary of a Mad Black Woman, you tell me that, oh, I will fuck. It's yes. like the dude. Th Bitch, I'm going to throw you in the tub and be like, bye. The guy, how, how can you expect? I never saw that, so I don't know. Um. <laughs> What she you're was talking not having about. it. But like but he, he is <laughs> he is dealing with the worst possible situation that he could be dealing with. He can't walk. He can't shit by himself. He can't piss by himself. He can't do anything on his own. And like you're gonna hold that against him because he has an attitude? A little bit. Mm. I pray I don't ever lose my full. You abilities. need me then, huh? 
I would not question so, that. So, but then you need me and you don't talk shit to me. When did he specifically talk shit to her? Get out. Before that. He just was real short with her. Yeah. What's wrong with being short? Okay, I understand you're pissed off, a, he's but I'm also place. doing all these things for you. She's unable to call it minerals. A little appreciation. She can't call it minerals, which is probably setting off a nerve enough. Like, he's taking this very seriously, okay. and she keeps calling it rocks. He's like, for the tenth time, it's a mineral. Like, that's pissing okay, him off, probably. I am, okay, and he could right, probably over, that. And he could I'll probably overhear that. her telling the therapist. Like, it almost felt like there was a sense of her hitting on him for a minute. Like in that conversation no she just don't want to be alone with hank because hank she doesn't is, want to deal with it is no hank is cool with the therapist because he's putting up a front i understand that he's not cool with the therapist he's putting up a front with the whole high five thing I fucking listen to me look damn at it. her abuse Jesus Christ! No, you're just, I, I, I feel like... No, you're not getting it. You're not getting it at all. We'll, we'll agree to disagree on that one. Like, um, if I was stuck in the bed and having a real shit time, yeah, I'm going to be upset, but I'm not going to be upset at you. It's not your fault. I'm in this situation. Yeah, but if, if I'm showing negative attitude towards helping you, regardless of how you're acting, it's going to rub me the wrong way if someone who's sitting in bed who can't move. I'm like, well, if you don't want to help me, then don't help me. Like, she wants to. I don't get the vibe. That's what I'm trying she to tell you. She got him a hospital bed. She got all the Yeah, the she did things. all of this stuff not knowing what she was getting herself into. To help him? It's gone farther than she could have ever imagined. The way she rode up in the car the other day with that look on her face, just like, oh, I got to go in the house now. I got to go deal with this. Because like, he's in a, such a shit mood. You shouldn't care. Let him be in a shit mood. So you, his she, life is so practically just, over. She's like, okay, but he's right, not we're, over. We're he's not going to. We're not going to convince each other otherwise. No, I, damn it. So we're going to just agree to disagree. Leave your comments down below. <laughs> because um, I'm right. No, I don't think you are right because she is. I think she's handling it wrong. I, I don't think I, I appreciate everything that she's trying to do. Just wait. But, just wait till we're old. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> let's just wait. It's just one of those things where I would be more on, on the person who's handicapped side in terms of dealing with his attitude and his short temper. Don't, okay, no, 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 don't go there. That's what, that's my opinion. That's what I'm saying. No, okay, but I'm not saying like, oh, because you're handicapped, you should never have a bad day. But like, that's your wife. Yeah, he, he clearly told her to leave. And then no, no, no. whether that was, say, hey, he, he said, get out, get out. And then moments later or the next day was like, Hey, can you help me with the minerals? So obviously he got over it. He didn't say help me with the minerals. He's just like, do he it. Check the box. Yeah. I don't know. I'm it's on Hank's deflecting. side. I'm on Hank's side on this one. Okay. I get both sides, but that's his wife. You can leave your comments down below. It doesn't matter what side you're on. See guys, we don't always agree. Of course we don't always agree, but. Because I'm right. I don't. Always. I'm not going to say that you're, <laughs> I'm going to side with the handicapped dude who's going to have attitude and have a lot of, like... It's okay. He's a very masculine dude. He this is just a TV show. I know. And I'm just sharing my opinion. And that's why I'm having such a good time. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Do you have emojis? Laughing cry face. For me. The gun. The the chick who happens to, in my phone, she has a purple shirt on, so it fits perfectly of her going like this. Like, I don't know what that fuck. She's frustrated. Yes. And then a musical note for Jesse. Yes. So. Wow, that was a long banter at the end. Sorry. The laughy cry face emoji for me. The gun for Walt. The for Marie and Walt. Or, yeah, the Marie and Hank. The disgruntled Marie emoji that's what we'll call it and then the musical note for jesse there you go those are the emojis for this episode that was a fun conversation was it yeah i had a good time i'm laughing I'm, hence the laughing cry face emoji I, I can handle these conversations it's fun i enjoy it that's the whole point we can't always agree on everything nope. it's just the way it goes yeah and but now you know what's coming to you when you're old <laughs> Don't I, fuck with I don't have as much of an ego as Hank does, so it's fine. 
If I know I can't walk and I need help, I'm going to be probably a super lot nice. Super nice to me. I'm going to have my horrible moments and talk shit probably at some points. But, but and those are the days that I will go walk around Target. Yeah, it's fine. I, I still side with Hank. Leave your comments down below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And we will see you guys next time. We really do love each other, I promise. I, do. I totally love him. Bye. It's so fantastic.